Welcome to the first physics lab of the year. We're going to be talking about money. All pennies, though. See, what we're going to do really is do some basic Excel. To do this, first thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh pennies. We have these little scales. Each of the scales has a number on it. The number is going, should correspond to the station you're at. If it doesn't, make sure you get you got the wrong scale. Come see me or Greg, and we'll make sure we get that straightened out. I'm assuming you all know how to use scales. They're not that complicated. Anyway, for this lab, what we're going to be doing is, the first part, we're going to be weighing pennies. So first we weigh one penny. Then we weigh two pennies. And then four, eight, 15, and 20. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use that data to predict how much 100 pennies weighs. And then you're also going to measure the actual mass. You put that all into the Excel spreadsheet. We'll go, we'll go over that in a minute. And you're done. You forgot the percent difference to it. Then you're done. For the second part, you're going to uh, copy the data that you got in your, spread, in, your, uh, in your lab manual onto the spreadsheet and perform the operations that are very similar. It's just a different fitting algorithm. And then for the third part, well, we're going to simulate radioactive decay using the pennies. I wanted to use real radioactive decay. I put in a requisition for some uranium-235, but the college denied it. They said, number one, it was dangerous, and number two, the lab would take too long. I guess uranium-235 has a half-life of uh, about four billion years, so you'd probably be here a while. Oh, well, so we'll use pennies instead. So for that, what you do here is you take your thing of pennies. You should have 100 pennies. By the way, you should count the number of pennies you have. If you have less than 100, you should see Greg or me. And if you have more than that, you should see me because you should give it to me. Don't give it to Greg. It's mine, all right? Mine. All right. Now, what you do there is you shake up the pennies. Okay. And you take all the ones that are heads out. This is really hard. Then you count the ones that are tails. One, two, three, four, five, six, so so forth. You would expect about half of them each time to go away. All right? You don't throw them back in. Well, anyway, you take out the ones that are heads, then you count them, and then you do it again. And you take it out. So the first time you'd expect to be only about 50 left, the second time about 25, then 12, and so forth. Okay. That's the operation. Now we're going to go look at the Excel spreadsheet and how we're going to do that. Okay. Now this is the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, the first thing you got to do in the Excel spreadsheet is fill out your names. I can't tell you how many times somebody will forget to put their names on there, and I'm supposed to guess. All right, no, I don't think so. Okay. The next thing is when it, you you write in the mass for one penny, right there, two, four, eight, fifteen, and twenty. Then what you're going to do is you're going to plot this. Now how do we plot it? Well, let's put in some data and we'll sh I'll show you. Sorry, it's a little crooked, but that's okay. So let's say we take 5, and then 10, say 11, and then 21, 39, oh, 76, and then, oh, 103. Okay, how would we plot that? Well, what you do here, and this might not be exactly the same thing as they say in the manual because this, we just updated to Office 2010, so some things may change. So pay attention. So you select it like that, and then you go to Insert, Scatter, and you select that one right there. Boom. And you see it says, place the graph of mass versus number of pennies in this area, erase these instructions in a row before printing and saving. Well, that's easy enough. You select on it, and then you erase it. You erase it, like that, with the backspace key. Then you put the graph there. And there's a couple things that it tells you to do. For example, get rid of the, ser that wasn't right, get rid of the legend. But then you also, it tells you to put in a trend line. Now, how do you put a trend line in? This might be different. What you do is you select one of the points there, and it says add trend line. And you choose which one you want. For the first one, we're going to want a linear fit. And we are going to want to display the equation on the chart. That's down at the bottom here. Very important. Then what you get is you get an equation. 
it says y equals 5.1068x minus 0.0568. Well, what does that mean? Well, what we want to do here is we're going to want to edit that to make that equation mean meaningful. So we say that the mass of the pennies equals 5.106 times the number of pennies minus 0.0568. Now we can use that equation, let's put it over there, make it nice. We can use that equation to predict over here how many pennies, uh, how much 100 pennies would weigh. And then we can compare it with the actual mass using this formula right here for the percent difference. Now part two is pretty much the same thing except I give you the data. So you can just you just type, put it in here and you put the graph at distance versus time over here. Now part number three gets a little interesting because like I said, the first time you start off with 100 pennies here, and you go down to say to 50, and then say 27, 13, 6, and 2. Now what you do here, you select this and you do the plot, insert, scatter, all right, don't forget to erase these things, like that, whoops, missed, okay. Now this is not a linear fit at all, it's got this nice fit here, that's called an exponential fit. So we're going to add a trend line and we make it an exponential, okay and we display the equation on the chart. And what you see here is you get this equation y equals 111.52 e to the negative 0.761x. Trust me, I know it's small. So you do the normal things for the formatting that tells you in the book. And then we're gonna, we, we'll eventually want to change this. Leave it for now until you're done. But you see that 0.761, the negative point? That's supposed to be, if it was perfect experiment, it would be 0.693, all right? So the actual lambda would be 0.693. The experimental lambda, in this case now, is 0.761. We can use this thing to figure out the percent difference. Now, you want to get to within 5%. So what you do is you repeat the, in this case, it's not going to be 5%, I can tell you right now. So you repeat the experiment, and let's say this time, second time around, we get 148 and uh, 22 and 12 and 4 and... Three. Now you add those two together. So this would be 200. This would be 98. Notice that the plot is changing over here already. This is going to make your life easier. Trust me. 49, 25, 10, and 5. All I did was add the two together. Now we erase these here. Well, you might want to erase them. You can keep them if you want to. You might want to keep a record of all of them just in case you get one really bad set of data. You can just ignore it. Now we got down to 0.742. Anyway, you keep doing this till you get to within, till this percent difference is less than 5%. Or you get up to a, a total of 700 pennies to start with seven times. That's called the Melissa and Tory limit, named after Melissa and Tory, who in an utter act of utter futility kept going up till they got 13, to this 13 trials before I told them to stop. It was awful. Now the last part here is you're going to you're going to put another plot up here just like the one you just did. So we go insert scatter just like this. But now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add the trend line again. So we're going to have four plots total. That's important. If you don't have four plots, don't bother handing it in. Put an exponential line in there. Display the equation on the chart. It's going to be the same equation. Okay? And then what we're going to do here is we're going to make the scale logarithmic. How do we do that? Well, you click on the scale, and it's somewhere around here. Format chart area. That's not it. Sometimes I have trouble finding it. Click on it till you get format plot area. That's still not it. Ah, format axis. You have to click on the on the numbers and then hit format axis. And then what you do is you click over here on this logarithmic scale option right here. It says logarithmic scale. And watch what happens. That line, which was a curve, becomes instead of being a curve anymore, now it's a line. Okay, it's the same data, just a different representation. Now you see this is 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. Okay? Anyway, save your data like it says in the book, and you're done. On to lab two. Enjoy.